it. <laughs> <laughs> We work. Let's go, guys. Let's go. See them. You gotta make sure the tag on here. This is something that we started last year and, and Mike Manning and you know his entire staff here uh, is just so uh, great to work with and they organize our group um, you know being part of our community and obviously the food bank is you know part of what we're trying to develop with our program is, is being other centered giving back to the community but I will say this these kids love doing this um, it's important to them and so when we put our schedule out there and they're looking at their potential days where they get a chance to be part of the community, they look forward to this. And for them to do it on the off day, right? I mean, obviously giving back and that kind of thing, does it, does it help with the team aspect of kind of you know, getting everybody together outside of the meeting room? Well, you could probably tell by the way they were singing and the energy that's out here today, it's a recovery day for them. Uh, Clearly it's planned, you, you, you certainly want to use their time the right way and, and this being recovery day where you know, they moved out of the dorms today, you know, they had obviously meetings, this is a great day to be able to do that and, and get them off campus uh, a little bit, you know, break up the, the monotony of camp. Food bank something that you guys have done a lot in yeah. your career? It has been and it's been part of the foundation, my wife and I, we've been actively involved in virtually every food bank that we've been at in every community. Uh, this is our fifth community that we've been in and we just feel like the food bank is such a vital force in every community and you know those that are challenged and, and need this kind of immediate help we felt our foundation has been a you know a great support for that and that's why uh, we've really wanted to be part of this. So, you know, NIL deliverables can be given out and autograph signings or, you know, meet and greets. Um, and, and that could have been an easy way to do it. But for me, what I wanted to do is make sure that the community involvement piece uh, was part of this. So if you were going to be given to uh, an NIL, if you were uh, moving in that direction, you knew that um, 
that was going to be about our players giving back to the community as well. So that's why we've asked to, to, to move in this direction. So if you did want to give to an NIL, you knew that our, our players were going to be involved in the community. How does this kind of wear off on your team and the kind of mentality and DNA you're trying to put forth this season? Yeah, so look, it's early on in camp. You're still trying to develop an identity with your team. You don't get a chance to, to cross the offense and defense very much. Um, you guys, if you were around a couple of days ago, uh, the offense and defense, uh, you know, they, they tend to get a little competitive. So these are great opportunities for them to mix, be around each other, uh, and see each other in a different light, because they don't do that quite often. But you got offensive guys singing with defensive guys, dancing. It just gives you another opportunity to continue to develop the identity of your team. At Rotary Club, you talked about doing the things you don't see on Saturdays to be a better football team, the little things, the leadership. So how does this play into that, too? Again, I think it's just another opportunity that gives our team the ability to like each other. You still have to like each other. This, this, look, you got to play together. And, and when you put together 115 players from different backgrounds, different likes and dis dislikes, they still have to play together. And so these opportunities give yourself a chance uh, to continue to build that uh, as a football team. Nice question. Good. No, no, I'm good. We just didn't get a chance to follow up with you yesterday about some basic injury stuff. How's J.K. Johnson uh, doing? Uh, J.K. fractured, uh, has a fracture, uh, lower, lower body uh, injury. It's a fracture. So that's got to get set. Uh, that looks to be a long-term situation that he's going to be out. Do you have a specific timeline? I, I, I would say that it's indefinite. All the other guys who would seem like they might be dealing with something, is it more minor? Is there anybody who you're worried about missing for the first game? We have no, I have no concerns based upon talking to Owen Stanley, our new athletic trainer, who we seem to have a really good connection on how we're moving forward. There's not one player that I have a concern with right now. Uh, can I ask you about J.R. Felton? Yeah. What he means to your program? Yeah. So, you know, recruiting's the lifeblood of any program, obviously. And, you know, when you assign somebody to that role, um, the, the operation of that today in recruiting, you know, takes on so many facets, right? It's bringing in transfers through the transfer portal. It's bringing in freshmen. It's, it's obviously, you know, having the ability to entertain uh, parents and uh, relatives. And so you have to have more than just uh, the ability to be liked on campus. You have to show them why LSU's different than every other SEC school. And JR has the ability to paint that picture. He's, a, he's an extraordinarily talented individual and he brings a lot. As a former player, somebody from Louisiana gets the mission of recruiting locally as well in the state of Louisiana and then brings a big picture understanding of you know, how to present LSU um, amongst everybody else in the SEC as well. Does he have kind of a unique approach, the way he goes about things? I think he thinks outside the box. Um, you know, I think there are some things that we streamline that are traditional, but I think what I like about him is that he's always thinking outside the box and what we can do to highlight what we're good at and, and you know, the strengths that we have here at LSU.